All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a review and a little bit of information on this knife. This is the Battle Axe brand by Cooper Cutlery. Ooh, I took the cap off. Um, German Hunter. And I think that it's kind of called the Conqueror also. But real quick, as always, if you enjoy videos like this on knives and knife related topics make sure you subscribe to the channel click the bell and select all so you know when i post new videos also check out my website knifethoughts.com where i post articles on knives like this and knife related topics and uh, check out my social media i'm at knife thoughts on instagram and facebook but let's get right into the knife here so first of all this knife does come in a tube similar to gec knives if you're familiar with them uh, if you're not familiar with Cooper Cutlery, Cooper Cutlery is Gilbert Cooper and his sons. He purchased the machinery and dies from uh, Queen Cutlery in Titusville after they went out of business. He did not get the Queen and Queen City trademarks at the end of things. There was uh, some dealings that I've heard about that I'm not sure all of the details on, but they ended up with Smoky Mountain Knife Works or their you know parent company. And Cooper Cutlery got um, Shatton Morgan, as well as a couple other brands, which this is one of, so Battle Axe brand. And there is some information in the tube, so you can read that here. Uh, and I wanted to give a little bit of background information, so I'll just kind of read it off. You can stop it and read it if you want. But basically, this Battle Axe brand was started really early uh, in the knife industry, 1877 to 1937. So a pretty good run of 60 years there. And then was revived later in 1975 to 1990, which is something that, that you see with other brands being started early on and then revived in the 70s to 90s, things like that. Uh, and this is kind of significant that these people who revived it became partners in bluegrass cutlery because I previously had only seen this, this axe shield. And I, I think that it's either the same shield or a very, very similar shield on Rough Rider brand knives. So, uh, it's something that I have seen before and is associated with that, which, you know, those are a much different price range than these Cooper cutlery knives. So, uh, not the best association to have, and I think probably most people would associate the axe shield that this knife has with rough iron knives if they would associate it with anything at all. I don't think that the Battle Axe brand is that well known outside of, you know, that and this particular revival. Here's a little bit of warranty information. I'm not certainly going to read any of that. Uh, it actually uh, references Weed & Co. knives, which I will show you a comparison. It's another brand from Cooper Cutlery. But it comes in some kind of wax paper, not the same type of wax paper that GEC uses, but a certain type of wax paper here. And this German Hunter is a pattern that they have done before. Actually, again, I will be showing you a comparison to another brand of the same pattern that Cooper Cutlery made. And it is a very large uh, Coke bottle hunter. And they call it a German hunter. It's, uh, you know, something that has been made as a German knife before. It actually even references uh, that in the paper that I was showing earlier that the Battle Axe brand was originally made in Germany. But it's a very large knife. I want to give you some comparisons. So here it is next to a Gradation Cutlery 97. So you can see it's a good bit bigger than the 97. Then here is both a Queen Hunter and a Rough Rider lock, uh, Liner Lock Hunter. So the, the German Hunter is more in line uh, size-wise with the full-size Hunters from Queen and Rough Rider than it is to the 97, which is another Coke bottle, large Coke bottle pattern. So it's a very large knife, and they made several different versions. This one is in stag. Uh, it does say how many they made of each here. So you can see that they made 100 in red bone, 100 in stag, 100 in green bone, 100 in white bone, and 100 in buffalo horn. These went for different prices at different dealers. I got this from traditional pocket knives, C. Reisner Cutlery. Uh, Austin is one of the first people that I talked to about this Cooper Cutlery 
besides trying to talk to Gilbert Cooper, I tried and tried to, to get in touch with him and wasn't able to. Uh, I did talk to his son some, but Austin, you know, has in close contact with Cooper Cutlery and he, you know, has been getting these knives. This knife cost $95. It ended up being basically $100 with shipping, $99.99, I think, at C. Reisner or traditionalpocketknives.com. Uh, other places are actually charging more. So I've seen some other dealers have them at like $140, as well as some, you know, at the same range as Austin or traditional pocket knives. So a big range, and I think that they are definitely a better value at the price I paid. So let's take a look at the knife. Well, as you can see, the stag handles are actually pretty nice stag. I was actually pretty happy with the stag. I think, you know, Austin probably looked through and, and picked this one out, but uh, still, I'm not sure what the other stag, you know, looked like. It's always kind of a gamble on stag, but this is pretty nice. Uh, well, moving on to the fitting of the handles, not perfect for sure of the scales, the covers. Uh, there are definite see if I can get that to focus a little bit better. There we go. Definite gaps between the covers and the bolsters. And I have, a, you can see that there also, I have a friend who got some of these and he had even worse actually on the gaps as well as some kind of chips in his handle material. So while the, the stag itself looks nice, it's not the best fitting, I would say more similar to a Rough Rider fitting, I would say, on the on the covers, than to even a case. Case sometimes have gaps, but not that frequently. And so not not great on the fitting of the covers. As for the back spring, mine actually isn't too bad. Uh, some of these, including uh, some that my friend got, have some, you know, definite gaps, significant gaps. Mine, I think, has some slight gaps, but I don't know that you can see through them. So uh, not not significant in the gaps on the back spring. Now, another thing my friend had is that his spring sat very proud at closed. I mean, like, like significantly proud. Enough that it would actually bother me and that's not something that usually bothers me. Mine is actually really nice. You can see that it's pretty much flush here at full close and pretty much flush here at full open. So I was actually pretty happy with that. Now, one thing you can see that there's actually some machining marks on the blade, moving onto the blade. They must have just like hit this with something, uh, which, you know, probably shouldn't happen on a $100 knife. Uh, and then the thing that I really like about this knife actually is the edge. So it has this cool edge, the Conqueror. I, I forgot about the shield. I'll talk about the shield in a second here. But the Conqueror, uh, just kind of fun. Uh, I mean, honestly, when you're buying knives like this, it's you're not going to buying this knife for pure utility. So it might as well be fun. And I think that that's pretty fun. The other thing is that this is a deep edge. It's not just, you know, like the edges that GEC does. It's actually engraved or etched. I, I don't know the process that they use, but it's... You can hear my finger catching on that. So that's not going to come off. And I do do like that. It's going to last. And I really like the pattern. I, I have to say, I, I, I'm a sucker for this, for this edge. There is a Battle Axe tang stamp. It says Battle Axe brand. It has two axes. And then Winchester, Ohio, 2021. Now, I actually bought this in either late March or early April of 2022. So... Uh, Cooper Cutlery is still working on their production, you know, processes, I think. Um, one last thing on the blade, the, so a lot of people, actually two more things. A lot of people don't like match strike nail nicks or long pulls. I don't mind them at all. I actually think that it's, it's relatively good looking, but I do think that it, you know, associates the knife even more with Rough Rider. Rough Rider is well known to do uh mail, nail strike no match strike nail nicks that was rough match strike nail nicks on pretty much everything so the fact that this has the the match strike long pull is just another way that it's associated with rough rider which i don't think is what they want on 
you know, $100 knife or more. And then also on the blade, it's very polished, uh, not my favorite finish. It's like a, I don't even know what you, you would call it. I think if you're familiar with, with Case and Rough Rider knives, it's kind of like that. It's like a soft polish versus a GEC polish, which is like a harder polish. I, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm sure if you've had both types of knives uh, that it will make sense to you. But this definitely is more towards the soft polish that you see on a case or rough rider now my edge is good i don't think that it has any blade wrap either but again my friends two of his i think had blade wrap then moving on to the shield here now this shield is interesting on its own i actually like it i think that it's a pretty cool unique shield and goes with the whole theme the german hunter theme the conqueror all of that i think that the shield does well with that and they actually did it pretty well there's not any real big gaps you know where they were where they cut out the, the space for it. But like I said, it, it does for me, and I think probably for other people associate the knife with Rough Rider, along with, you know, the finish and, and the match strike nail, uh, the long pull. And the other thing is that I just cannot tell if this shield is pinned. It has this pin uh, type looking thing here. So if you can see that, there's this raised dimple on it. But if you look inside, usually the way to tell if a knife is pinned is if it has a pin sticking through on the inside. I don't see one, but there is a polished spot. It doesn't seem to coincide with the, the where the pin would be. So the pin should be right here. And that polished spot is down here. I, I actually think that there was just some, uh, some pull out where the, some of the, the brass from the liner you know, was, was not right. But I don't see a pin, and I hope you can see in there, I don't see a pin sticking through the liner. So to me, it looks like this shield is not pinned. And again, I definitely prefer a pin shield. It's something that reminds me of Case and Rough Rider uh, on, to have an unpinned shield. And you know, I don't really buy case knives anymore because they come with issues so often and Rough Rider knives are usually under, certainly under $50, usually under 30, usually under 20. Um, but real quick before ending this, I wanted to compare this though to the Weed & Co knife that I got. This is an earlier knife by Cooper Cutlery, uh, same pattern, like I said, but a different brand. This is another old brand. Uh, again, some, some issues with the uh, associations maybe. I don't care, and I think that it's kind of funny, but it is a little bit, you know, outside of the norm for the knife world, particularly traditional knives. This one comes in a sandwich baggie, so they were really going for it, uh, and then has a little quote. Kind of funny. But anyway, uh, comparing the knife. Now, I also got this one from Traditional Pocket Knives, see Reisner Cutlery, and it has a lot of the same things. So some gaps between the covers and the bolsters. The backspring has some slight gaps, so very, very small, actually. This one is more off, more off center and doesn't have the coal etch. Weed & Co., I'm, I'm not really a fan of that etch. It's, it's simple. I don't really feel like it's... I wish it was lined up with the edge instead of with the, the spine. This one also says Winchester, Ohio 2021. So I don't know if these were made in kind of the same batch and just finished separately or, or what, but these came out a while before. Um, but the reason I say that is because I think a lot of people were hoping that with each successive run of these Cooper Cutlery knives, they would get better. This first uh, run of, of Weed & Co. knives that were released Honestly, it's one of those things where I am happy to have it. I think that it's a cool knife, and I want to support a new manufacturer, even if they're using old old machines. Uh, but I don't think that they're made that that well. They're 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 fine. I mean, I'm happy to have both of these knives, and I think at under at a hundred dollars or under hundred dollars, this is actually a pretty good value. I really wish that the shield was pinned, but. 
At 140, I wouldn't think it was a good value. But a lot of people, myself included, were hoping that each successive run would get better, that, that you know, Cooper and his sons and whoever else is working for him would improve, would learn, you know, to use the machines better and everything like that, and they would get better. I don't really see a big difference between these two. I would say that they're both about the same quality of fit and finish, which is, again, acceptable to me, but not incredible. And like I said, my, my friend got a couple of these from this most recent run, and they were not acceptable. Now, that said, it does seem like it's possible that these knives or the parts for these knives were actually made at the same time because of that same tang stamp that they were both made in 2021. So maybe future runs will be better and these are actually just both from the same run, basically. Who knows? It's hard to tell. I, again, have... I'd love to do an article, like an in-depth interview and things like that with, with Gilbert Cooper and Cooper Cutlery, but I haven't been able to get a hold of them. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of information. I basically have the information that comes in the tubes, uh, what people say on blade forums, and what Austin tells me. So, uh, again, to reiterate, I am happy to have these two knives, and particularly this one, because I really love this edge, and I think that they're kind of fun, and when you have a lot more knives than you can use, having them be fun is, is an important part of it. Uh, so I'm happy to have them. I hope that they improve. I wish that they were slightly better fit and finish. Um, but it's one of those things where it's great to have another manufacturer and hopefully, and it's also great to have these old brands being brought back and hopefully they continue to improve and do a better job so that they can compete with people like GEC. I think that that's really where it makes sense for them to compete, especially at this price range. And right now, they're not quite there, but I'm hopeful that they'll get there. So if you've enjoyed this video, like I said at the beginning, make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and select all so you know when I post other videos. Go to my blog at knifethoughts.com and uh, subscribe by email to the blog. I write articles on knives, the history of knives, things like that. And also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.